Good afternoon. Well, today we've got a little bit of a music theme. There's a question from a professional musician in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And we're starting off with a little bit of Tchaikovsky, his violin concerto. He only ever did one violin concerto. And listen to that for a second. This is Isaac Stern, one of the best ever. Just beautiful. And the reason I've chosen this bit of music, and I don't listen exclusively to classical music, I've got a very wide taste, but I do love some classical bits, and Tchaikovsky is one of my favourites. So I'll just turn him down a touch. In fact, I might even switch him off. Sorry, Isaac. Sorry, Tchaikovsky. The reason I chose that piece of music is because when I was used to drive to tournaments, that's what I played. It's one of my favourite pieces of all time and these concert pianists, concert violinists they are just virtually perfect they hardly make one note of error and I always thought if I could just play golf like that and the music gives me a sense of rhythm and a sense of calm and then I'm just looking for my golf swing to be as not perfect because you can't be perfect but to be as much together and to have as much control as a concert violinist in this case would have. So it just put me in the right state to go out and play golf. And then as I was playing, it would just be in my mind and take my mind off scores and the last three putt I had or anything like that. So, okay, I'm gonna start off with a couple of these. And so let's just, because this is my daily practice or part of, And there's one thing in particular I want to talk to you today about. Because a lot of you are talking about tension. I'm delighted about that because the more relaxed we are, the better we play. And you'll see by the first question in particular. But I want you to watch, let's just turn this way for a moment. I want you to watch my finish. And see the shaft is touching my shoulder. And I find that if I go through here and really flop, I can get further through, even my old back. But if I'm tight, I can't get there. If I relax, I've got more flexibility and I can go further. And um, I'll either give a reference to, or if I can, I'll link um, a video that one of my coaches, Hein, in, uh, our new coach in Holland, has sent me. And it's a, quite a long um, video of lots of Fred Couple swings. Now, there's nobody with a more relaxed swing than him. And if you watch at the end of his swing, how much, how, how close his shaft gets to his shoulder at the end of the swing, because he, he flops his arms. Shoulders are a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit tight. Um, and I think that with a, a bad back, that tightness of the shoulder doesn't help. But apart from that, it's just rhythmical, it's lovely, it's relaxed. Okay. Um, so that's enough of that for today so let me just put that to one side and i'm going to change glasses it's a bit bright out here today but i can't read with those so here we go so the first question and today is all your questions and it's from rick reed um, and rick is from nashville in tennessee and he says um I hope you're doing well in your isolation and not crawling the walls. I was curious if you would consider doing a video about tension in the grip during the full swing. Well, grip and overall muscle tension. I still struggle with this, especially right at impact. Sometimes I can even make a bad swing and get decent results if my grip pressure and muscle relaxation are okay. I've seen Sh Shan's thoughts on this and would like to hear from you. I think this is a big, big issue for all players, including professionals sometimes. If you remember, you coached me a few years ago. I'm the musician from Nashville. Yes, Rick, I do remember you well. You're a drummer and play the drums and percussion. I got into the really bad habit of tension in hands, body and even holding my breath. Can't be very good as a drummer if you do that. Of course, I was a victim of getting older and trying to hit it as long as before. I think 90% of the amateurs I see suffer from this issue, including myself. So, um, uh, so, one, one little drill, and we talked about Ron Sisson the other day. Now, one of the drills I learned from, from Ron is 
brilliant and it's so simple and it gives you wonderful feedback about the consequences of tension so all you would do and you can do it with any golf club you stand there and you grip it as tight as you possibly can so on a, a level out of 10 you're gripping it 10 out of 10 you're trying to crush the shaft so your, your grips very tight your arms are tight everything's tight and I want you just to grip this up and down with the club okay and then what we'll do is we'll just go once we've done that a few times we're just going to release the tension down to nine and to eight and seven and six and five and four and three and then I want you to tell me what does the club feel like between three and ten is there a difference well all I can tell you is here it feels like a an iron bar that's got no life in it whatsoever and when you get down to fours and threes oh it's loose it's flowing it's it's a totally a totally different feeling and I mentioned the other day about getting the, the club to come alive well when you're throttling it like this it, it, it's as dead as a dodo so um, I now just want to come on to shoulders because I see tension in shoulders probably more than anywhere else and we've talked a lot in golf about shoulders you've got to turn your shoulders 90 degrees so you've got people out there and especially if you think about the deadly don'ts so they've been told not to move their feet in the back swing they've been told not to keep not to move their head they've been told to keep their arms straight and they're trying to get a 90 degree shoulder turn oh ouch i'll be careful here so i'm just going to do this one little demonstration so let's see, let's go ahead to here. And it looks from where my left shoulder is, I've got the shoulder under the chin pointing at the ball. Hear my voice. But if I then don't move other than just do that, have I turned my shoulders? This is what I should be turning, not my shoulders. If I turn this and allow my feet to move, my head to move, this is what's going to create power. Not pulling the shoulder out of its joint to make it look like I've turned that's what I would call a false turn damages your shoulder damages your back your neck a no-no okay and um, a quick little story there when I was the, the club pro at a golf club in Southampton in Hampshire in England uh, this is in the 1980s and um, my mother who was still alive at that time and she worked for a, a firm doing their books for them on a sort of part-time basis and she persuaded the owner, who was a golfer, youngish guy, youngish guy, 40s, to come and see me because he was always complaining about his golf. She said, well, go and see my son. So he booked a lesson, came to see me. And before I went out to watch him hit shots, um, we sat in, my, uh, in, in the pro shop and I asked him about himself and got some background information. And then I said to him, and if there's one thing I could do for you, what would it be? He said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, I... He said, when I play golf, my golf swing has gone ugly. I know it has, it just feels dreadful. And he said, I'll, uh, I can give you one description. He said, I feel in my golf swing, I've got too many shoulders. And when I went out and seen him play, and he was doing this, and his shoulders were buffeting his chin and head, and it looked ugly. Um, and I, I helped him quite quickly with that. Um, so yeah he felt he had too many shoulders and we've only got two but he felt like he had six or seven in there battling with each other so to me i don't think that if we go back to our dance to golf my shoulders aren't doing anything they're being moved and yes you could say my shoulders but this this whole thing that's moving and just to talk about shoulders and especially for the americans amongst us most people will have heard of carl lewis the, uh, the athlete, American athlete, of course he was hugely well known in America but pretty much around the world and I saw a program recently about him and they said that, the experts said that in the last 10 or 20 meters he used to look like he accelerated he didn't, they were all slowing down but because the others were slowing down more than him he looked like he was getting faster and the one thing about him was that he never tied up and you know what it's like if you tie up at the end of a race everything gets tight and you can see it particularly in the shoulders so keeping loose in shoulders again is another sign of how relaxation helps you be more effective than somebody with tension so thanks for that rick i hope some of that helps and um, you're absolutely right i can remember when i first 
created Positive Impact Golf in 2006 and I did some advertising and I said I can guarantee to reduce your tension didn't get any didn't have any impact whatsoever I don't think people know that they're tense I think they know that their golf swing isn't very good and it doesn't feel very good but I don't think tension was recognized as a, as a fault and the fact that you are actually you are now able to identify that and see that in others I think that's wonderful so thanks Rick and hope that helps okay second question and uh, I've got an admission here I'm not quite sure where this person comes from uh, Clive Wood um, so Clive asks haven't played for two years and yearning to try your method the swing looks too easy to generate any distance hopefully we've covered that a little bit in some of these videos could you let everyone know what yardage you would get with a driver, 7-iron and wedge? I really do like the method and thinking behind it. This information could relieve any lingering doubts. Thank you, Clive. Oh, sorry, Clive, that I should have done a bit more research and then find out where you're from. So, um, so it looks too easy. OK, well, let, let's just give you an idea. Um, through the air today, and this is not in 2010 when I did my first video because I've lost a little bit of distance since then um, I actually fly the ball in normal conditions without any wind I fly it through the air about 220 225 yards okay and if um, 130 with a 7 iron that's flight and about 100 yards with the pitching wedge of course what I rely on off the tee in particular on long par fours I rely on a bit of run so when I'm playing in the summer on courses that aren't overwatered and I get my 20 30 yards of run they're fantastic in the winter or if I'm playing on courses even in the summer you go to some places <coughs> and they just they've watered so heavily that the ball doesn't roll very frustrating when you're a senior golfer and you, you need that extra bit of run so I hope that helps um, someone like Julian will hit the ball at least 20 to 30 yards further than me with the driver Shan would be maybe another 20 or 30 yards on top of that so and somebody unfortunately some horrible little guy called Philip Sparks my younger brother hits it even further than a lot of them put together anyway and effortlessly okay so I hope that helps um, one quick little story about that is that there was there was a, um, a a challenge set between Tom Kite and I believe it was an 18 handicap amateur and the challenge was that they would both tee off both hit a second shot and then they would swap balls so Tom would then go across and hit the third shot using the 18 handicappers first two balls and the, the 18 handicapper would benefit of, of Tom's first two shots and carry on from there and then th their score would be the score the ball they eventually put in the hole now who did you think won that match there were no handicaps no shots given and you would have imagined that the 18 handicapper benefiting from fantastic long game of Tom Kite would have won no Tom Kite won because actually it was all about getting what happens near and around the green and that leads me on to this next our third question for today uh, right so now this is so we're moving from America to wherever Clive is from and now we're to uh, Munich in Germany at uh, Jürgen Bach whether there's any relationship to the famous we were talking about music earlier on so we do have a music theme anyway um, um, so Jürgen says a few words and then he comes on to the specific point that he wants he said uh, especially some exercises for the pitches between 30 and 100 meters I thank you in advance and stay healthy but well, thank you very much Jürgen and the same to you so okay so the sh I think the the shots between 30 and 100 meters they're what I call the link shot and you'd add in maybe even the, the shots, any shot from off the green up to 100 yards, 100 yards, 100 meters. 
it's the link shot it, they're the shots that link your long game to your putting and I've played especially doing a lot of retreats and lots of groups and watching them on the golf courses and I'll give you a, a, a generalization here whatever the handicap they'll hit one two three four five shots and be in that link shot situation so they've got the ball up somewhere near the green and it's a bit like all hell lets loose and they can take as many if not more to get the ball those last 30 yards onto the green and in the hole than they did getting 400 odd yards to get there so to me that's a very important shot and um, the, the first thing that I'm going to say to you I'm going to ask you a simple question so you're standing over a golf ball and let's say you've got a wedge in your hand it could be a 9-9, nine, nine, a wedge, a, um, a sand wedge and you're not on the green so you've got a short shot to hit I want to, I want you forget the shot you're going to hit so this is a, again a very open question what's the shortest distance you could hit the ball with that club? Let's think about this. What's the shortest distance you could hit a golf ball with your 9 on your wedge, your sand wedge, and actually any club in the bag? Well, I'll reveal it straight away. It's about half an inch or a centimetre. Yes, you could do that. Now, I've said that to a lot of people, and usually when I ask that question, because they say, oh, I'm really struggling with distance control on those short shots, and I ask that question and they go, oh, um, um, oh, and they start looking. Um, and you see their eyes get a bit closer and, closer, and eventually say, oh, well, about five yards. Oh, really? Is that the short? Oh, well, uh, well, three yards. And for some reason, they don't say a very short distance. And the fact that they then understand that every club in their bag has the ability to hit a little distance and so one thing to practice is hit it two or three inches, hit it a foot, hit it a yard or a metre, and hit it five metres, hit it ten metres, and get, get, I don't see people practicing their distance control. So going out and practice, taking a club and saying, okay, I'm going to hit this club, nine nine or a wedge, I'm going to hit lots of different distances. Not to a specific target all the time, but I'm going to keep changing my target. I'm going to move it up and down and go, Lots, so that I'm actually working on my ability to control distance. I think you'll find that that makes a lot of difference. And then I want to tell you about Bobby Jones. And I, I think he was wonderful. And I think he said a hell of a lot of fantastic things in his books. One of the things that he was asked about was um, what to do when you've got less than a full shot. So he'd asked, well, what would you do? Well, I'll start to shorten my backswing. And he said, no. No, he said, the first thing that I would suggest you do is change the speed and when you think about it we're all trying to shorten the backswing but actually if you do, did swings at this speed it could hardly go a million miles could it okay if you top it it will roll too far admittedly but if you practice changing your speeds and you've all got the ability to to change speed so just again just another option i'm not telling you to slow down your swing for short shots but rather than shorten your backswing, start off by slowing it down, which will also helps you be a little bit more relaxed. And relaxation is so important on short shots. And then obviously as you get closer to the green, you'd, you'd shorten your swing, depending on the distance you've got to go. And just to, just to finish off today, if I reflect on all of my tournament golf over the years, there will be two things that happened on my best scores. The first thing, that I was in rhythm that day. And in my 50 odd years of playing this game, can you imagine how many methods I've tried? Especially in the earlier days. So, and then you say, well actually, I've had good scores with lots of different methods. And I was always in good rhythm that day. And then the second thing is that I was pitching and chipping well. Pitching and chipping to me is, is the short shots around the green and then gradually a bit further out. So that if you're 30, 40 yards away and you're on that day where you're knocking it quite close and then holding a few of those putts, what a difference that makes to your score. So that link shot, 
and I don't see many people practicing that. I see them whacking balls with the driver until they're, until they're absolutely very tired. Excuse me, I nearly used a different word there. So practicing those shots, absolutely vital. So I hope that's helped. More of your questions next time. And please, if you've got more questions, please send them to me. I'll be delighted to, uh, to put them into some of these videos. Thanks for joining me.